the beginning of January, Walter Reed is finally ready for harvest. This is one of the two key materials we chose to cover the medieval roundhouse roof with. These annual water reed shoots have died. Their stems are now dry and the leaves from last summer have just been shed. It is important the reed doesn't have its leaves anymore as they enhance rot once the reed is applied to the roof. The reed harvest has only just started we need a lot of it, but the type of roof we have in mind requires another key material, one tied in strongly with Irish history as well as other places in the world. And for that, first a special tool needs to be crafted. This tool is called a flockter or scrogger in Old Irish. It's the Irish and also Scottish equivalent of the English breast plough. In contrary to what the name breast plough suggests, with its curved handle it is pushed forward by thrust from around the thighs rather than the breast. The spade head should be flat and very sharp, edgy as they used to say. Folks. Yeah, the flock there, folks. We were gonna cut reed, you think, for the roof, but no, this is the tool for this episode, man. Yeah, serious piece of kit. Hand yeah. forged. What's the Gaelic name for this again? The Skrogge <laughs> No, man. it's actually a pr properly pronounced Skrogge, but you write it the Skrogge so <laughs> I like that more, but our historical advisor won't be happy about that. <laughs> no, but the Gaelic language, man, if you have no familiarity with it, it doesn't make any sense. The roof build, major part of the project. As in time and effort spent, yes. you mean? What we had in mind was that we, we use only natural materials uh -huh. from our local surroundings. So no synthetic cordage, for example. Mm -hmm. Of course, we use some modern hand tools, but that's not a building material. It's just quantities of stuff, isn't it? Uh -huh. that's, that's why it's hard. It's a big project. Uh, we call it the Celtic Roundhouse, mm -hmm. but who actually were the Celts? Where did they come from? How did they live? And that uh, relates to the sponsor of this video. The Great Courses Plus. There is a course on there about the Celtic world. Who were the Celts is not an easy question to answer. No, sure. How long ago is that like? So the Great Courses Plus is a subscription-based video lecturing service with lectures in various topics from history, science, how to play properly chess, personal and professional growth. At the moment I'm following a course on conflict management. No matter what kind of projects you do, you're always going to have differences. My Mr. Professor of the course, he says, think about the shared goals instead of focusing who is right or wrong. We can smooth fix our conflicts. Of course, on YouTube we also learn things, but the great course, if you want to go more in depth on a subject, in a structured way of learning, you get a free trial, so you can just uh, check out if it's exactly, something for yeah. you. You're already excited to do a lecture at the great courses. My chess skills now are grand, but no, you have me curious. I, I'll have a look into um, what is available, you know? What would be a topic you'd be interested in? Is there like bushcraft related skills in it? 
I like one with a survival mindset rather than about the skills. It's more about the psychology of it. Yeah, so, that's so cool. Practical skills and, and stuff. It's more about sharing knowledge, but sure, courses like photography, for example. That's Baking Bread was yeah, an interesting yeah, nice one. one. So you guys can check out the free trial and you also support the channel, us with that. You go to the greatcoursesplus.com slash smoothfix or the link in the description and uh, just check out if, it, if it's something for you and maybe it's not. You got me curious anyway. Anyways, we better on the same page on this damn roof and we is get cracking on. How to build a roundhouse roof, is that a chord? <laughs> no, that is a bit too specific. You guys better stay in YouTube as well uh, watching <laughs> us. <laughs> nice one, nice one. As archaeological evidence often only reveals the base of a structure, history has not left us with many clues of how the roofs of Iron Age and medieval roundhouses were built. So much of how we see the roofs of roundhouses these days is based on assumptions and improvisation in the here and now. With doing some research into historical Irish roofing, a particular material caught our attention used since at least the medieval period and not often seen in other historical roundhouse replicates. A medieval Irish text from around the 10th to the 12th century said the following. The Rots of Doral, Cleaha Caelig Mora Osakianov August Scroha for Tarshiva Nechtar. Which translates to Some put great hurdles of waterling above their heads with layers of sods over them outside. We gotta go to the bog. Irish bog. Ireland, wet as it is, has a lot of it. Much has been excavated, as Ireland has a history of intensive bog use, mainly for turf as fuel, but back in the days also for roofing material. Ground pairing sods, in Irish referred to as scra, a term which is anglicized as scraw. Such scraw roof covering was described as follows. Tough grassy ground skin, like a carpet approximately the length of the roof slope. The layer is sourced in the bog. The layer from the fields is too friable. These sods would traditionally be harvested in the spring, opening up the surface prior to the harvest of turf fuel. But now it is the middle of winter, likely the wettest and worst time to harvest scraws. They are soaked with water and a lot heavier than what they would be during the summer. It's a bit nasty, isn't it? Yeah, just a little. Good scraws are basically just root mats. Too much soil in them is undesirable as this will only make the scraws heavier without adding any strength. Oh, there you go. It's almost broken here. Okay. Nice. You okay?
That your proud partner. We are happy with it, aren't we? Man, whoever made that thing, man. Serious skill, right? The, the, the forcing. Yeah, it's serious, man. Yeah, in the end, second hand. The heart shaped blade we use came from a turf cutting spade, in Irish called a slanagara. And back in the days, some also cut scrolls just with a spade like this. But the flactor design, having an upgraded handle to push the blade from the hips without having to bend down, undoubtedly makes for lighter work. And it still works, man. It works well. I think maybe a handle on the bottom. You're saying a foot handle? Just as a. Yeah. You know, yeah, that'd be a good idea. With everything in this process, we really have to find it out from from scratch. Really, of course, yeah. there's a few historical sources on it, but it, it's not that we could ask some guy, hey, show us how it's done, you know? <laughs> to laugh at you. <laughs> like, what? What? Yeah. Huh? You want a digger? A good bit of extra fun. Huh? Man, that, that ice, man. Ireland has a strong sea climate, especially in recent years. These frosty and dry conditions with a layer of ice are unique. The perfect conditions for the water reed harvest. Robin birds are very present, especially during those winter days, following us humans for opportunities to scavenge some food. It's handy, isn't it? You go like this, around the thing, make a knot. Put it through. Right. Yeah, that was the end of that, eh? You just hit a frozen lump with the tip, and then all the force comes here, and then it went snap. Good back. That's the problem when you don't see the the bottom, you know, when it's lumpy. Extra weight on the feet and be dodgy. <laughs> With our tools and reed cutting skills still needing some refinement, the ice soon disappeared. We better first get this scraw gathering done. Oh, I experienced something funny online. Oh yeah? I put a bid on eBay on the shirt, alright? Oh. The last minute starts, right? It's like, yeah, that's all fine. 
and then 10 seconds before the end. So I'm putting 51 pounds, bam, snap, sold. <laughs> but I wasn't willing to pay 51 pounds for it anyway, so it was fine, you know, I didn't mind, but it was just super funny. For the scrawl layer not to crumble apart, it is especially important that their roots are tough. Many historical instances cited sedge having tough roots as a critical indicator of suitable land for pairing scrawls. In this bog we have selected an as even surfaced area as possible with mainly sedge plants growing on it. Historical references generally mention scrawl sizes of about 2 to 2.5 two feet wide and the length of the roof from top till bottom. By four. We calculated 77 square meters would be the estimate of the, the roof uh, surface. You manage? I think so. We soon found that for us a width just short of two feet and the length of no more than about eight feet worked well. Otherwise the soaken scrawls become too heavy. Perhaps they already are. Nah, I need a push. Soaking <laughs> one we've ever hauled in, isn't it? Yeah. yeah I'm afraid this is not gonna cut it. You know, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me move that one first. Why is it the mess here? Why is it a mess? Yeah, plastic bag in your bulk. Yeah, because that's what the Irish do, man. Plastic bags all over the place. These were to put the turfs in, weren't they? Sods. Sods. You want nasty water? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. We did a good bit today. Yes. We had some nice stretches. But it, the, like the ground is never consistent really, you know. The roots are, are very important. You have the right type of, of vegetation and roots. We went on the drier part there. As you can see, it might even be more grassy. And we find that the root structure didn't improve there. Also the depth. I mean, we, we are definitely not that skilled yet that, that we are fully consistent with our depth. Yeah, I don't know what we have to do now. We should go less deep anyway. Hmm? An Irishman once wrote, The cutting of the scraw was a job that few men could do properly. And I know a few who could cut as even as a bale of tweed. But towards the end, our saws became more consistent and we cut them at a depth of about three inches deep. So there's a lot of factors here that yeah. play a part. Yeah, also like it's soaking. Everything is soaking. Look yeah. like this is what we just cut. It's already on the water, so doesn't help us either because you can't really see where you're cutting and then everything like this one we just hold on the pallet and it's just dripping yeah so that makes it harder it used to be a summer summer job really well they cut the turf right uh -huh. so they have banks they cut the top off uh -huh. they use that as a byproduct really yeah, yeah. but what they're after is the stuff under it uh -huh. so they they are like why would you dig in the water if you uh -huh. can wait for the summer and dig it when the water levels are lower. Uh -huh. Yeah, and the bundles don't dry as quick in the, in the winter, especially no. here in Ireland. 
After harvesting, the scraw rolls would have been left on the field for about a month to dry. However, now it is the middle of winter, with loads of rain and barely any sunshine. Our scraw rolls might not lose much weight at all and be very heavy to transport and be put on the roof. You want to do a guess? How much would that one be now? Yeah, 150. Yeah, I would have guessed 200. And without the water, maybe one third. Just on the water, you can say it's nearly 100% saturated. Uh -huh. no? And then uh, we have to haul it too, man. That's a big operation. Uh -huh. Like the actually putting it on. It's gonna be the treat of the whole process. <laughs> well, yeah, actually using the stuff. Uh, yeah, but carrying up that roof wouldn't uh, something I'd be looking for now. Reminded. Once it's dry and once we have it there, we have a lot behind it. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think the material harvesting will be a major part of the of the whole roof build. Yeah, you come back to that, like the medieval stuff. You want to have 20 children. <laughs> Kick them all out and do the work. <laughs> you know? Slavery. It's not slavery, you want a house or not? Big challenges are ahead of us, but we'll do our best and find a way. Subscribe to the Smooth Fix and see you on the next episode. Huge thanks to the Great Courses Plus for supporting the Roundhouse build. Loads of interesting topics to learn about. Please check out what they have to offer with their free trial. Check out all the other Roundhouse episodes starting with Constructing the Foundation in Episode 1. On Patreon we post monthly channel updates on the Roundhouse progress.